just a quick tour. Um, I finished this knife um, really just yesterday. Uh, it's for a customer. This is a belt sander, professional belt sander. They used to uh, carve up my uh, blades at a drill to carve out or to drill out the pin holes. Um, I make f I make fixed blades and I make uh, folding knives. So um, this I'm preparing to put an edge on it, and I don't want to damage the Damascus, which I etched with acid. So I'm just gonna finish it off. Maybe maybe you'll enjoy watching it. And since it's a pretty thin blade, I'm going to... Actually, no, I'll keep it there at around 21 degrees. I think it'll be okay. And uh, here are all my stones. It starts from um, uh, 50 grit, which I'm not going to use today. It's usually... I need to take off a lot of material, so I'm going to start today with a hundred. Get two of each. One of each. One for that side, and then one for this side. And I put the tape around that because um, I don't want to scratch the uh, the etch, because um, I'm not have to acid etch it again. That's no good, because then it damages the edge. Oh, thanks for the award. Appreciate it. So as you can see, the um, you see the tip, the edge just start to emerge from the blue tape. And of course that protects the, uh, the beautiful Damascus um, underneath. Um, so I can sharpen as sharp as I want. I'll just keep doing this. It's already starting to get sharp. Getting sharp. Um, I'm, I'm going to go right to the 200 grit. So I'm just going to flip these around. And there we go. And 
And if anyone has questions about knife making, happy to answer. You know, take a break. Um, I come on Reddit, you know, every couple of weeks and show progress on my new knives. This one is. Um, I actually really like this. This one came out pretty pretty good. I wanted to make it uh, pretty thin. Um, it's got tough micarta on the outside. Uh, you can see the pattern in there. These are um, brass pins, and this is a brass tube for a lanyard, which I'll tie later on. And I also epoxied a red G10 uh, for extra color. And when I polish it all up, it'll, it should pop very nicely. So we are at 200 grit. Yeah. What happened? Nothing. Can you put that umbrella up in the picnic table before it starts boring? Oh, sure. I can do it right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a live broadcasting. Why don't you say something? It's, it's okay. There's, there's only a couple of people on here. <laughs> you don't know what I almost said. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right, I'll go move it up, okay? Sorry, I gotta go move this. You're welcome. All right, back to knife making.
That's my anvil. It's an 1860s, uh, 70s Peter Wright. Some tools. And that's my forge over here, a little forge. I don't make big blades, just small pocket knives. So I don't need a, a big forge. All right, back to knifing. Little bit more on the on the uh, flat. Now you can't really see it on this, I'm sure, but the edge develops a little burr, which is just um, basically tiny wires off the edge. And you can feel them with your thumb. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Maybe um, another minute with the 200, and then we'll go up to um, 400. Let's go up to 400. You can feel the burr on the opposite side of where you're sharpening. And that's why you want to go pretty easy when you first start. 
because you don't want to burr, the burr to scratch your bevel. You can start to go faster. That's pretty damn sharp. Let's get some paper. So let's compare that to a higher uh, grit. Maybe a better cut here. Okay. Yeah, we can get that much sharper. So this is the 400 grit paper test. Let's keep going up. Now we're going to do 600. Thank <laughs> you. 
I think that's good for 600. Let's go up to 800. Let's move up to a thousand. ceramic starting at 1200 and then 16.
Okay. Let's see how sharp that is. <laughs> excellent. That's excellent. So the 400 grit, uh, it's hard to see maybe, um, but you see it's pretty rough and it started to separate you know, about, what, about two inches in. But once you get up to 1600 grit, it's like butter all the way through. No effort. No effort at all. So let's just do a final run. And then we'll do a little polish. And that's it for today. The last step is the sheath. I make the, the leather sheaths from scratch, um, and each leather sheath is shaped to the knife that I make. Um, you know, I can't really mass produce the uh, the sheaths because every knife I make is definitely different. Um, I tend to, if, if the buyer is local to me in Connecticut, I will um, bring my test knife over just to see uh, the various sizes in the hand so I can um, basically shape the handle to fit the hand. And so doing that, you know, you have to make a sheath from scratch um, so it doesn't fall out. So that's the, that's the last step. Okay, so that's about it for the, um, for the wicked edge here. Um, we'll put my stuff away. And here are all the stones that I used. And let's pop this guy out. Put this away. I'll show you the edge here. Hopefully you can see the Damascus folds in the steel. Maybe if I zoom out, I don't know. So there it is, there's that, see the clinty edge? really like that and maybe you can see better in the light here yeah that looks that's what Damascus looks like um, and there's the sh super sharp this is a very good edge I, I think this this turned out really well um, and this is a smaller version of the typical knife I make so it's good for someone with you know, medium hands, I guess. This is, would be too small for me, but the gentleman I'm making it for, uh, it's perfect size. It fits his hand great. Um, and then what I do is, uh, this is a bit of uh, jimping here. I use what's called a checkering file, which is this guy. And basically you, vi uh, you put the knife handle in a vise, and very carefully you start to etch or grind using this checkering file. And that gives you a bit of a, a rest for your thumb. So when you're slicing, you have good purchase. And this is a, uh, a brass tube at the end instead of a pin. Um, and I did that because I tie a lanyard on the end uh, with a titanium bead. So I'll tie that um, you know, towards the end. If you can see, you see a couple. This is my carta at the edge here. There's a red piece of G10 that I epoxied in the metal, like sandwich that, and then you have the um, the steel all the way through, so it makes for a very strong slicer. And 
the last thing I'll do today is just put some polish on it. And I use, uh, there's a couple of polishes. There's Bry Wax, and, but I, I, I tend to like Re Ren Wax, Renaissance Wax. So always get a clean towel. And then um, if I put the lamp over here. This will brighten it up just a little bit without damaging the acid etch on the knife itself. Yeah, I really like how that turned out. If you look really closely on the um, the edge, you can see the uh, the folds of the of the steel in the edge itself, which I think is a nice effect. Um, okay, so let's just take a little bit of this. You don't need a lot. Um, that might be even too much. It's okay. Some of the waxes um, are a little harsh, and they actually will finally sand away um, the acid, well, the remnants of the acid. And then what I have to do is I have to acid etch it again. And then if I already put the edge on it, the acid's going to blunt the edge, which sucks, because then I have to do sharpening again. So this is the order that I do it. It works for me. This also goes on the uh, the spine, and once I do that, the red really comes out of the G10. And then what we'll also do is um, give the handle some of this Renaissance Ren wax because that will seal in some of the pores. And add some additional protection against weather. That's all there is to it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll be back on Monday to build the sheath.